Hello, everybody. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Wow, so Leisure Suit Larry 2. A lot has happened in the first part so far. We won the lottery, no big deal. We won a dating show. Hooray, hooray, and oh, hi. I was talking. Hey, you, where have you been? We've been looking all over for you. I just want the dating connection. Big deal. You were supposed to wait here. Now hurry and follow me. Oh, no, Larry. Here we go again. All right. Well, uh, let's stand up. Let's not keep my audience waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally found him, says the Master of Ceremonies. Yes, we found our last Lucky Life lottery contestant of this week's show. And now, here he is, Mr. Larry uh, Laffer. Yeah, Mr. Larry Laffer. Yeah. Yay, yay, we've been here for hours. Let us go home. Mr. Laffer, we don't have time for our normal introductory chit-chat, so just step up to the wheel and give her a big spin. Under his breath, the MC admonishes her, hurry up, Laffer, we're already running late because we couldn't find you. We're... All right, sorry for winning all of your shows. Nervously, you reach for the wheel, knowing full well that the pleasure of America's 3D graphic animated adventure game players is riding on the luck of the pool. There we go. I don't know what the prizes are. Oh, I can have dots or blur or maybe this grid here. What? Says Larry, apparently. He did it! He did it! He's the one, the big one! Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Laffer has just won the largest prize in the history of the lottery. A million dollars a year for life! <laughs> Tons of applause! I can't clap any harder! Come on over here, Lucky Larry. Great, so a millionaire and going on a cruise. This is fantastic. I could buy the cruise ship at this point. Here comes lovely Lana Light and the Lucky Life Lottery Lady with Larry Laffer's first year's winnings. The U.S. Treasury Department's first one million dollar bill. When the heck am I going to break that? Well, gee, thanks. On behalf of the Lucky Life Lottery, I am pleased to present you our grand prize one million dollars. Oh, that's the MC saying that. I thought that was Lana Light. Sorry. Yeah, I'll put that in my pants. I'm a schlemiel! I haven't heard that since, uh... Oh, what was that show? Laver Laverne and Shirley. Congratulations, Mr. Laffer, says the MC. You're a lucky man! Too bad we don't have time for a speech. Bye! Hey, <laughs> good luck. I hate you. Let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Laffer, the luckiest guy in Los Angeles. Even more applause. Yeah, we're so happy for you. We're not jealous at all in the least bit. The voiceover announces that's it for this week's show. Be sure to tune in next time for our Lucky Life Lottery Show live from Hollywood. Good night, jelly beans. The control room talkback speaker crackles. Okay, kids, there's another one. There's another stuff. Who's for? Mr. Laffer, please open through the door to the left. There will be plenty of uh, reporters and photographers waiting for you. That was the best Im imitation of a speaker I could do. I imagine it's pretty crappy because it's the 80s. Gee, Larry, things are finally beginning to go your way. First, you win a month-long ocean voyage with the lovely Bachelorette, and now you win the biggest lottery prize in history. Something tells you this is too good to last. Oh, yes. So let's check our inventory. Yes, it has had a quite a major upgrade since last we checked. We've gone from a single dollar bill to a million dollar bill. Wherever will you find someone to break this? Exactly. And a cruise ticket. Just wait until you're on that ship with that lovely bachelorette who can't stand the sight of you. My guess is she probably won't even be there. Is she talking to me? No, she was talking on the phone. Actually, let's see if she has any different opinions of me now that I am a complete millionaire. Talk to girl. Uh, nope, she does not care. I can afford so much more bubblegum without her on my own. Oh, God, God. I'm in the middle of L.A. with a million dollars in my pocket. This is dangerous. Don't, who are you? Don't look at me. Don't look at me. You can't have it. Let's go to right to Rodeo Drive and stock up for our cruise. If we're going to go on a cruise, which I assume is leaving any minute. Oh, let's go to Disneyland. Can I go to Disneyland and have a million dollars to spend? I can buy my own ride. Maybe I can be altruistic and spend my million dollars a year to get the Brown Derby back up and running again. It's an LA landmark, isn't it? I, I remember hearing about it. I never, I don't even know what it was. I assume it's a restaurant, I think. I'm going to look this up. Okay, so according to Wikipedia, it was a chain of restaurants in L.A., the first of which was shaped like a man's derby hat became synonymous with the golden age of Hollywood. A chain of brown derby restaurants in Ohio is still in business today. Cool. 1941. 
1926, sorry, William Meisner. Yes, it looks just like a little cheesy chain restaurant, but it says formal dress code required. Whatever. And I learned something today. There we go, Multilira. Yes, on Rodeo Drive. This seems like just the place to break a million dollar bill. Mmm, swimsuits. I'll need that. Uh, let's see. Well, I should probably... Uh, I would say get a new suit, but get rid of the leisure suit? No way. This place may be overpriced, but at least it's gaudy. There's a sale sign in the rear wall. I don't care about sales. I have money to burn, literally. Never in your life have you seen a man's suit that required a home mortgage. Isn't a million five a little steep, even if the suit is imported? Oh, okay. So I literally, they put it right out of my reach. It's a million and five dollars. Can't afford a suit, but I can't afford a swimsuit. Wait a minute. These swimsuits are marked down to half price. Only $100,000. With your newfound wealth, you could afford that little blue bikini job hanging there. I bet nothing else. It's like, all right, well, the blue bikini it is. So take bikini. Oh, oh, that's oh, she's down there tapping her finger, just like, well, any time, jerk. You select a reasonably tight spandex job in blue, although it's cut a little bit tight. Perhaps that may work to your advantage on the ship, <gasps> because it'll show off my masculine curves. In fact, this may be a beginning of the whole new image for you, Larry. All right, it looks like she's talking with her mouth animation there, but she's not saying anything. Look, picture. Evidently, while decorating the store, cost was no object. And also, no help. Huh? Um, I wonder what happens, he said, hitting the save button. If I try to, uh, steal this swimsuit, let's see. I have the swimsuit in here. Just love the feel of cheap spandex. It was a $100,000 spandex. Let's see if I just leave. Multilira is sophisticated computerized automatic shoplifting prevention. Keep the door locked while customers carry merchandise for they have not yet paid. Interesting. So, what if people want to come in? I have basically held this store hostage. Nobody can come in or out as long as I'm holding this swimsuit. Give me everything in the register. I'm going to hold this swimsuit until the end of time. Hey, my little Latino bambino. Have I told you now I'm incredibly wealthy? You're sure to endear yourself instantly to her with that pseudo-bilingualism. Oh, how many shipping lines do you own? <laughs> Ouch. All right, no, she's not interested. Pay for swimsuit. And, excuse me, miss, uh, do you have change for a million? Bella bueno. But, of course, but uh, is that trivial little clearance item all you're going to purchase today? Yes. Yes, ma'am, you reply, handing over your lottery winnings. I've only got a million on me. All right, that would be $106,500, including tax. Your change is $893,500. That's 100, 200, 300. Fast forward. <laughs> Stop, don't count anymore. I don't have that long before my ship leaves. Oh, crap, am I on a time limit? Very well, she <laughs> concludes. Kiss it, slappy. <laughs> I got. I forgot to pick a new one. We got to put a new one in there. This is fantastic. Kiss it, Slappy. How did she know she was going to say that? You pocket your new gigantic wad of $100 bills. I'm a slug. All right, check and check. Let's see. What else can I do with now only a paltry $850,000? Maybe this music shop is open already. Let's go. Maybe I can afford like a really expensive saxophone. I know Al Lowe would approve. Open door. Nope, it's not open yet. Drat. Well, I'm not ready to get on the boat yet because if I do, I think I mentioned this before, but if you don't have everything you need from the greater Los Angeles area before you get on the cruise ship, you are dead man walking and you won't know it for about another hour and a half. Uh, oh, I know. I can get myself a fresh new haircut while I'm here before I get on the cruise ship. Let's go. Ouch! Not sure what kind of music emulation that the Scum VM system is using, but I, I like the DOSBox version better. That hurts my ears. Good day, monsieur, says the puppet. May I help you? Uh, let's see. Get hair cut. Okay, just sit down. Got it. Sit. Uh, how about a quick styling? Oh, oui, monsieur, but of course. Allow me to correct that receding hairline of yours with my patented special proprietary technique, macrobiotic styling reriving. Just have a sit in the chair, please. 
Ugh, yeah, take a look at this mirror and remember what you look like. When I'm done, you won't be able to recognize your own hairline. Why, well, you'll be a different man. I'm beautiful. No, 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 he says. This mirror will not do. You think to yourself, yeah, this is exactly what I need. A new look. I'll make Bachelorette Barbie change her tune. Eh. Okay, go for it. Hit me up, um... Uh, your name is Olivier. Allow me to begin with a thorough cleansing to rid your hair and scope of any possible pollutants. I assure you, I use only the trendiest products, oligonically glued and available only in undersized, overpriced beer de gras bottles. I kind of lapsed into Scottish there. My apologies. The name of the next barber will be Scottish. We run into a lot of barbers. Why are you rubbing my chest? You wonder to yourself, what would I look like when he's done? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? Will I ever find true love? Is he about to break out into song, Larry? No. Whoa! In 3D! Whoa. You certainly have interesting dead dreams, says the barber. Oh crap, you can see that? My apologies. Oh no. Hey, Brutus, get out of my dreams! And into my car. Your air is clean and conditioned. Now for this special styling. Gah. However, in the future, I would make recommend 10W40 and no more than 3,000 miles between all your changes. Shank, 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 shank. All done. Uh, take a look in this mirror. What do you think? Gah. I look exactly the same. No, no, no. Oh, it's awful. Oh, well. Well, I guess you can't judge a book by its cover. Oh, that'll be fine. Say, um, exactly how could I know I was getting macrobiotic styling? By the price. That'll be a hundred bucks. Now, whenever I say that, I hear uh, the the clothing store guy in Space Quest Four. That'll be one hundred buckazoids, uh, please. Thanks. I I guess the barber replies, "Look behind you, a three-headed monkey." <laughs> what? Where? Wait. No, I only see a mirror. Are you implying that I, sir, am a three-headed monkey? I take umbrage. Okay. Well, what else can I spend my money on? I think there's only a handful of shops I could actually get to. Oh, maybe she'll take me back now that I'm a gajillionaire. Oh, she put her trash out. Let's poke through her trash. Look in trash. Who'd want to search through Eve's can? Me. Hmm. Look in trash. It seems kind of suspect that it's there. Okay, okay. Searching through the trash until your suit turns off white, you discovered your passport. Ooh, stuffed between pages of old Cosmo. Perfect. I'm going to need that. Get... You now smell like a combination of cheap department store credit card bills and roadkill. That's a really specific smell. Let's see, I got my wad of dough. Is it hundreds of hundred dollar bills in your pocket or are you just glad to play this game? <laughs> Neither. I'm really nervous because once we get on the cruise ship, that's it. If we don't have everything, we got to play through the game all over again up until that point. Hey, the store is finally open for business. Thank God. I wonder what the trigger was. Maybe the haircut. Let me in, please. Thank you. Ooh, it's beautiful. I saw the bell ringing up there, but it didn't play a sound effect. I feel gypped. Ye olde ethnomusicology shop is filled with unusual instruments from the four corners of the world. You wonder which ethnic subculture makes such extensive use of electric amplifiers and drum sets. Play drums. Mm, nope. Okay. I'm not allowed to mess around with the instruments. Look. Tuba. Nope, tubas don't exist. Look, trombone. Nope, I am not allowed to say trombone either. Okay, this game is made by Al Lowe, so if, it, if the word saxophone is not in here, I'm going to be really surprised. Wow. Hmm, Al Lowe, did you really make this game? Look, lady. Yep, there she is, all right. She looks just like one of the people I can call. You find Latin American women sexy. But then again, you find any woman sexy. Hi, beautiful! You attempt to lay a little smooth mouth on the lovely Latin lady. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer? Buenos dias, señor dos asinta bella bon. La señorita el tocos? <laughs> oh, they got a little translation down there. Good day, sir. How may I help you? Oh, suddenly she smiles broadly as if she recognizes you. Her smile makes you glad you took Spanish in high school. Too bad you slipped through it. Ah, what the hell. You decide to brush the dust off your Spanish by attempting a conversation with the lovely senorita. Perhaps you could begin by complimenting her on her extremely good looks. 
<laughs> el pesto, el gagardia se spermo bubitos, you tell her. Which translates to, your ears remind me of whale breasts. Mm, her face brightens further. She seems genuinely interested in you. Your Spanish must not be so bad after all. Si, se la luna el gros pupi dog y la babino, la sonorito reportitos. Yes, but the moon is full and you are a chihuahua. Hmm, is this how we... Uh, whoa, speaking is one thing, but understanding is another. Her response baffles you completely. You have no idea what she means. Of course, that's never stopped you before. El pincelo es tubero, grudido, amarillo, you tell her. My pencil is long, hard, and yellow. My gnome is on fire. El hombre de la nostra donde esta megla signale, la rito de stupeto sentatis, la signorita chama. Which translates to, so you're finally here. I thought you'd never show up. By the way, who writes these secret phrases anyway? <laughs> la microfiche el, el nim big dilo, oncle no touchy, doctor nel nuki el kami. The microfiche containing the secrets of the recent United States superconductor research breakthrough is hidden inside this rare Peruvian onkelung. Don't let anyone touch it before you personally deliver it to Dr. Nonoki. And, I don't need to tell you, be careful. He, and he alone, has the authority to deliver it to the USSR agents. Yay! My very own musical instrument! Muchas gracias, la señorita! Cool! Uh, the best you can tell, she wants you to keep that musical instrument on the counter. So, rather than risk offending her generosity, you take it. I am a nerd. Have the nice day, oh. Which translates to, look behind you, a three-hunted monkey. What? Oh, oh, I'm not in control. He's actually so scared, he's running. Uh, why is there a low rider and a spy? Say, what an interesting car, you think to yourself. How does it make it do that? Hmm, you are so distracted by the low rider that you fail to notice the unusual little man lurking beside the car. No, actually, I can see him quite... Plainly, however, he doesn't fail to notice you. Hmm. The little guy in the trench coat gives you a short head start and then follows you. Careful, Larry. This guy's up to no good. But look at the lowrider. How can anybody attached to that car be up to no good? It's fabulous. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Watch this. How can you be at the door to the music store just when you walked off screen to the right? <gasps> that must be someone who looks like you. Someone strange is going on here. Something even. Let's follow him into the music shop and see what we can learn through the magic of computer game technology. <laughs> you, what are you doing here? Says the clerk, skipping the foreign language subtitles completely. You better get on with the mission before Dr. Nonuki prevents you from ever missioning again. What are you talking about? I've never seen you before in my entire life, says the dorky-looking guy. Besides, you're not supposed to talk to me out before we exchange our cute little secret phrases. What do you mean? You just walked out that other door over there. Oh, not me. Uh, wait a minute. Don't tell me you gave the goods to someone else. I, uh, uh, sister, I'm not, uh, may have, may have, her voice trembles with fear. I'm sorry, he fit- Why am I French? I'm sorry, he fit your description perfectly, and he said the secret code phrases as well. Although, come to think of it, he did have a terrible accent. I thought the bad accent may have been part of your disguise. Oh, what will I do? Dr. Nonuki does not tolerate mistakes. Her eyes flashed with an idea. Of course, if you'll promise to help me, I won't tell him how you lost the microfish. Why, you- if you know what's good for you, you'll shut down this joint, contact Nantonite Island, and get troops started finding this guy. They'll guarantee he tells no tales about your little indiscretion. If you can retrieve the microfish before he discovers what he has, Dr. Nonoki might even allow you to live a few extra days. I don't know what accent I am going for anymore. I've switched about twelve times. Well, you're right, of course. Yeah, you see if you can follow him while I contact the idiot, the island by radio telephone, because it's the 80s, and we're high tech. Well, Larry, this is certainly another fine mess you've gotten us into. Not only is the KGB after you for grabbing what was supposed to be theirs, but Dr. No Nookie's beautiful army of henchettes, game show hostesses, church secretaries, and bimbos is now hot on your tail. Since we've now learned the worst, we rejoin you as you wander through Los Angeles. I should probably save here. And what do we have? We have an unklunk. An unklunk. If only you knew that this unklunk surprise contains important international secrets. Oops. I'm so intrigued by the term unklunk. 
that uh, when I created my website, which is now Auditory Dumpling, I was going to call it The Onklunk. And I even got the blessing of Al Lowe to call it that. But then I decided it doesn't really roll off the tongue well. Hey, for the best in music news, let's go over to Onklunk. Yeah, I made a good decision. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, no. Get away. Get away. Hey, Shetty, would you like to hit the old bird? Um, I don't trust you, my good man, but I have recently saved, so I will interact with you. Talk, man. That's some breath you're packing, buddy. He ignores you. How about a little nip? Um, I'm pretty sure he's trying to kill me. What if I just give the man, give man unk lunk? That's probably what he wants, right? No, you easily give away the hopes of the free world. Way to go, traitor. Next time, you better hang on to your unklunk. Yeah. Wow, for really screwing up the freedom of the free world, I, uh, it's kind of a jaunty little tune. Sure, you reply, always looking for a little nip with some seedy-looking stranger. Say, this really hits the spot. Nothing like a good hard snort to pick up the old adventure spirits. And this is the 80s, but this is the one instance where people say snort and it doesn't mean cocaine usage. There he goes, thump. Oh, it just knocks me out. I thought that killed me completely. Gotcha, you scurvy dog, cries the cleverly disguised KGB agent. Now, let's go to my place, and not for a drink. Oh no, my virginity. No, I've already lost my virginity. You're fine. These guys are playing for keeps, Larry. You better be more careful if you're going to hang on to your own clunk. Oh yeah, here it is. Oh, this this one always kind of freaked me out. You are quickly taken to the local office of the KGB, where a specialist in unk lunk extractions is busy giving you the third degree. And so, my little white-suited capitalist swine, says the KGB agent, you will now give us the location of that unklunk, or I'll be forced to run these alto saxophone reeds under your fingernails until you're singing like they're bad. It's seriously, it's right in my pocket. You can have it. Things don't look good, Larry. Maybe next time a different approach would be better. Oh, you mean not take drinks from mysterious strangers when I know the KGB is after me? No. <laughs> All right, what if I just say no to him? Can I just walk away from him? Hey, Shunny. Uh, no. Thanks anyway, Buster, but I'm on the wagon. Oh, okay, I thought he would like chase after me or just like shoot me or something. Hmm? All right. Oh, oh, is that the cruise ship I'm going on? Look, ship. Yep, that's what's out there. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, oh yeah, the drugstore. Maybe I can actually buy something in here now. I'm going on a cruise ship, so let's buy all the necessary hoobity hobbas mm, Shelves filled with sundries, but I not see nothing that seems useful. Maybe if I look at a different shelf. Zay, a bottle of that sunscreen might be handy in the South Pacific. All right, take sunscreen. Not close enough. Well, where is it? Is it here? Is this it? Where is it? Oh, this is ridiculous. I've been doing this for like a minute now. I can't find it. Whoop. I found it. It was right there. Got it. SPF 90 should protect you from something. All right. I think he said something about uh, impressing what's your face and blah, de blah. All right. Anything else I need in here? Look, shelves. Uh, nothing more of interest. Okay. All right. Buy sunscreen. Actually, no. Wait. Before I do that, let's see. Let's see what he does if I try and steal something. He said reaching for the save button. Nice try trying to sheep lift. She sheep lift? No. Trying to shoplift from this nice young clerk. Oh, it doesn't even let you do it. Oh, oh, nice guy. Oh, I get it. All right. Well, I didn't lose any points for it, so. I like to pay for this. Do you have Do you have change for 100? No, nope, but feel free to give me a big tip. But of course, my good man, you tell him suddenly putting on airs. Have 100, in fact. In fact, have two. Money means nothing to me. Like, thanks, dude, he tells you. Now, uh, let me go back to sleep. He concludes with a familiar, Sithis be with you. There we go. I feel like I'm playing a whole different game. I'm a lame-o. All right, I think there's one more thing I have to do before I go. And that's at the convenience store. And I know this lady does something if I try and steal. Because she's a cowboy. Well, I don't know, maybe there's more than I need. I know I need this drink. I can't remember why, but I need this drink. So, uh... Fill cup. There we go. Ooh, look at that. Gallons and gallons of the stuff. A 
cup that large might take a long time to fill. I can't walk around while you do it, so hopefully it won't take too, too long. A cup that large might take forever to fill. Finally, you top it off while you carefully consider how you're going to pick it up. All right. Ah, what the hell? This isn't real life, but merely an incredible simulation. You decide to put it in your pocket along with everything else. There we go. Beautiful. I'm a dullard with a pants full of soda. I know this sign up here says drinks because, you know, it's there's drinks there. But the R looks like an A and the, the little blob at the end could be anything. And maybe that one in the middle is H. So it's Daiko. Daiko. So maybe it's like some sort of uh, Japanese drink. Hmm. How multicultural of you, Larry. Anything back here? No, because if you look at anything, it just tells you there's a soda dispenser and a lottery ticket machine in here. That's pretty much all. But can I explore some more? What's in here? Open door. No. Uh, open fridge? No. Well, I guess I got... All right. Well, whatever. Well, I'm just going to... Since she probably didn't see me with this cup of soda in my pants, suddenly the woman behind the counter comes to life. Hold her right there, partner. You ain't going to rustle no soda off of me. Yeah! Oh, oh, that's brutal. Brutal. Yeah! Screams the clerk. You're one dead coke sucker. <laughs> Enunciate carefully, please. Thanks. It's almost like they knew LPs are going to be a thing in the future. Well, fortunately, I take Aldo's advice. Save often, save early, and save when you know you're about to screw up. Buy soda. Here's a $100 bill. All right, partner. Too bad we don't keep any change this time of night. But it's broad daylight. Seth us be with you, <laughs> she concludes. <laughs> and I'm a pinhead. Oh. I love this game. If you haven't already, go back to the comments. I'll link it down here again, but you guys can put around... To oh, no, you have fooled around too long. In your distance, you have a fog horn announcing the departure of your cruise ship. The story of your life. Once again, you have missed the boat. Oh, no, there is a time limit. Fuck! Uh. Well, fortunately, I have a lot of different save files, so we're going to have to go all the way back to wherever and play back all the way through here without wasting so much time. My sincere apologies, and we'll start that again afresh anew next time. So until then, a good night, Jelly Beans. Good night. I wonder how much if I hit order a hint book. See your local software dealer or dial 209-683-6858 from 8 to 5 Pacific time. Have your credit card handy. I wonder. Please leave your message for 209-683-6858. Hi, my name is Paul Dukin, and I'm calling from YouTube. I would like to order a copy of your fine Leisure Suit Larry 2 hint book so I cannot die at the hands of liquor store owners with guns. Thank you so much. You can deliver it to... By the way, I'm a personal friend of Al Lowe. I shook his hand once. I met him, and I did not rub his head. I think that deserves some sort of consideration on your part. Thank you. Give me a call back. Bye-bye.